What is going on, you guys? It's your boy Keaton back with another video. Uh, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. Link is in the description below as I get into my NFL Week 10 predictions. So let's not waste any time here. Let's get into these picks. Last week went 10 and 4, which is pretty good. Uh, season 81 and 53, which is a solid record there. Continue to get better each and every week. Uh, so let's continue to stack up these wins and continue to improve. Teams on the bye, Los Angeles Rams, Kansas City Chiefs, Miami Dolphins, Philadelphia Eagles. Thursday Night Football Edition, we have the Carolina Panthers traveling to Chicago to take on the Bears on Thursday Night Football. Bears favored by three and a half. Uh, Carolina coming off a loss at home to the Indianapolis Colts, 27-13. Not much to say about that game, obviously. Uh, they just couldn't get anything going on offense. Couldn't stop the Colts on defense. Couldn't get the stops that they needed um, to put themselves in position to win and that type of deal. Uh, Chicago coming off a loss down in New Orleans, 24-17. I was actually pretty surprised with this Bears team. Obviously, they kept things close, which I thought the game was uh, would have been a blowout, in my opinion. Um, but they kept things competitive. They kept things interesting. They were in the game. Obviously, they just weren't able to make the stops that they needed to uh, make to be able to win here. Um, but overall, between these two teams, I just think the Bears are just a better team. Give me them to win 27-17 at home. I just think their um, defense will be able to get after Bryce Young and this uh, Panthers offense and make things difficult and thanks to that deal. So give me the Bears 27-17 at home. Next game, we have a Germany game between the Indianapolis Colts versus the New England Patriots. Colts fair by one and a half. Uh, Colts coming off of a road win at Carolina 27-13. Uh, not much to say about that game. The Colts was able to do what they want offensively. Um, they really got after that Panthers offense, just made things difficult, um, and, and things to that deal. Uh, the New England Patriots coming off of a loss at home to the Washington Commanders, 20-17. to A very disappointing loss for the New England Patriots, obviously. When you look at the Commanders, they were pretty much giving up on the season, trading their two best players at the deadline, Montez Sweat and Chase Young, and Patriots just weren't able to take advantage of that um, and stuff like that. You know, the offense continues to struggle. Um, moving the ball down the field and stuff like that. I just think that, like I said, this is not a good football team in the New England Patriots. I think there's going to be major changes this offseason. I think there's just going to be, you know, Mac Jones isn't the answer long term from them, in my opinion. I think Bill Belichick's going to be gone next year. So I think you're going to see it. this This team just needs a complete reset at the end of the day. This is just not a good football team. This, this is honestly the worst football team, in my opinion, in the league. You know, as of right now, they hold the number five pick, which Honestly, they could potentially have the number one pick by the end of the season. And actually, it wouldn't surprise me if they did. So, but overall, between two teams, give me the Colts here, 21-17. I just think they're just a better football team right now. Uh, I think they have more to play for than the New England Patriots and that type of deal. Um, so, I like the Colts here, 21-17 in Germany. Next game, we have the Houston Texans taking on the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Uh, the Bengals are fair by seven points. Uh, the Texans come off of a big win, high-scoring game at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 39-37. C.J. Stroud continues to take care of the football. You know, he only has one interception so far uh, on the season. You know, you continue to take care of the football the way he is at a high clip. Um, you know, you're going to you're going to win a lot of games in this league. So I've been very impressed with what I've seen uh, from C.J. Stroud and this Texans team. This Texans team is very exciting. And so far, I mean, they're going they're in the mix for the for the playoffs, and you know, I, I really hope they do make it because I think they deserve it at this point. Uh, the Bengals coming off of a Sunday night football win at home against the Bills, 24-18. You know, they really shut down this Bills offense. You know, they got an interception off of uh, Josh Allen, um, and you know, obviously Joe Burrow is healthy. The calf is right. Uh, him and his team are continuing to get hot at the right time. And the same thing like last year. They start off 0-2, and then middle part of their schedule, they start getting hot. And you know, obviously, they're getting hot at the right time. So the Bengals are showing why they're. I think they're the team that can come out the AFC if things continue to trend the right direction. And you know, this you know you can't forget about Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is reminding people that he's the real deal. So overall, between these two teams, I just think this is one of those games where. Um, you know, the Bengals are they're going to get after C.J. Stroud, and I think C.J. Stroud will throw. One or two interceptions in this game. I think this is just a very 
Um, very good Bengals team, even though C.S. Stroud is taking care of the football. I mean, you were going up against a really good Bengals team. So give me the Bengals here, 30 to 21. I think they're a better team. Um, and you know, like I said, they're still in the in the hunt uh, for the AFC North and that type of deal there. So Bengals 30 to 21 at home. Next game, we have the Saints taking on the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. Saints fair by two and a half. Uh, Saints getting a road or a home win last week against the Bears, 24-17. Obviously, they held the Bears to 17 points. You know, defense really took care of business there. Um, really getting after that Bears offense, that type of deal. The offense obviously um, is lo is is looking consistent so far. Uh, they're putting up points. And they're doing what they need to do to win games, in a, especially in the week NFC South, and they're still leading in that division as of right now um, in that type of deal. Vikings getting a big road win down in Atlanta, 31-28. Obviously, Joshua Dobbs coming in, you know, not knowing the playbook, him just going in there and just doing what he needed to do to win the game at the end of the day. They got a, Like I said, they got a big-time road win there. And they still don't have Justin Jefferson at the, at the end of the day, but I think Joshua Dobbs fits in with that team really well. And I think this team is going to continue to trend in the right direction, and they're, they're going to be in the mix, obviously, for the playoffs and that type of deal. But overall, between these two teams, I like the Saints to win 2019, a very close game. I just think their defense will be able to make some plays, um, things of that nature. I think they'll, that'll be the difference in the game there. So Saints 2019 in Minnesota. Next game, we have the Green Bay Packers traveling to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's favored by three points. Packers coming off a home win against the Rams, 20-3. to Not much to say about that game. There was no Matthew Stafford in that game, in that type of deal. Uh, the defense was the main reason why they won that game. You know, like I said, there's no Matthew Stafford. They really got to that offense. Um, now obviously, the Rams just didn't have an answer offensively um, in that game there. Uh, the Steelers coming off a Thursday night win at home against the Tennessee Titans, 20-16. to uh, like the same deal, but the Steelers won that game with their defense at the end of the day. The offense was able to get some touchdowns and stuff like that, but their defense, like I said, Pittsburgh's one of the best defenses in the league, and they continue to show that week in, week out. Um, love to see more consistency with the offense, but their defense is legit, and you know they're sitting here at 5-3 and three in the mix for a playoff spot um, and stuff like that. So between two teams here, I think it's going to be a rough day for Jordan Love against this defense. Um, and obviously the offensive line issues that Green Bay is having. Uh, so between these two teams, I like the Pittsburgh Steelers 24-16 at home. I just think their defense is going to get after Jordan Love, make things hard um, for that Packers to get anything going offensively. So Steelers 24-16 uh, at home. Next game, we have the Tennessee Titans at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Buccaneers favored by one. Titans come off the loss at Pittsburgh 20-16. Like I said, they just weren't able to get anything going offensively against that good steel defense and that type of deal. Um, they did have some flashes where, you know, Derrick Henry was able to get some things going off offensively. Um, you know, DeAndre Hopkins was able to make some plays, but obviously just wasn't enough. Steelers were able, they were really able to contain uh, Derrick Henry and not Titans offense at the end of the day. Just like I said, just kept them, uh, held them in check throughout that game there. Uh, Tampa Bay coming off a loss at Texans 39-37. You know, I think Tampa Bay right now, uh, they've been in, in a lot of high-scoring games. Um, but there's, they're just not able to finish some of these games. I really thought they should have won that game um, at the end of the day. But you know, their defense has really given up a lot of points, and that kind of worries me a little bit if you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan and that type of deal there. But overall, between these two teams, I like the Titans 23-20. I just think, you know, as of right now, Titans, um, you know, Derrick Henry will have a big day, especially you know, on the ground against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. This Buccaneers defense is not a good defense as of right now. Like I said, they're giving up a lot of points on that side of the ball. I think Derrick Henry will have a, a day. And I think the Titans offense, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, I think he'll have a big game as well. So Titans 23-20 should be a tight game here. Really good game here. We have the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville. San Fran's favored by three. Uh, obviously, the 49ers won the bye week. Uh, they had a week eight loss at home to the Cincinnati Bengals, 31-17 there. Uh, Jacksonville was also on the bye. They had a week eight 
uh, win in Pittsburgh, 20 to 10. Obviously, you know I think this is a big uh, um, bye week for the, especially for the 49ers, who is currently on a three-game losing streak. Um, they did get Chase Young um, from the from the Commanders, which I think he fits tremendously uh, for that team and for what they want to do. And obviously, their goal is to win the Super Bowl at the end of the day. I think Chase Young just Fits the fits the, the um, fits in with that team really well there. Um, Jacksonville, um, you know they got a, a win. Like I said, they got a win in Pittsburgh, twenty to ten. Uh, their team is obviously they're 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 a quiet six and two team right now, and everyone's kind of sleeping on them a little bit um, and stuff like that. But overall, between these two teams, I like the 49ers to win twenty eight to twenty three. I just think this is a get right game. Uh, for the 49ers, you know, this is one of those games where I think, you know, they're on like a three-game losing streak right now, and I think they have a big game here. I think Brock Purdy has a better game. I think the 49ers defense will be able to get after Trevor Lawrence and that type of deal there. Um, this should be a good game, though, but I think the 49ers are just better. I think they'll make a little bit more plays there. So 20-23, 49ers in Jacksonville. AFC North game here. We have the Cleveland Browns at the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the Ravens are favored by six. And the Cleveland Browns coming off of a dominant win at home against the Arizona Cardinals, 27 zip. Uh, they, like I said, not much to say about that. They really got after the Cardinals' offense defensively. Offensively, they were able to um, have a good day. Sean Watson and those boys were able to have a um, a big game or big game against this Cardinals defense. So they really just were able to do what they wanted on both sides of the ball there. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens come off a dominant win at home against the Seattle Seahawks, 37-3. Like I said before, Lamar Jackson is on a mission right now, and he's showing it right now in this play. You know, as soon as he got that contract, uh, that long-term contract he got, you know, he's letting teams know, like, hey, I'm here. You know, I think he's definitely in the mix to win MVP, and I think this team can definitely get to the Super Bowl if things trend in the right direction, and um, they continue to stack up these wins and put themselves in good, great position here to get home field advantage in the AFC playoffs. Um, but overall there, I like, you know, the Browns, I think they can keep the game close with their defense, uh, be able to just contain Lamar Jackson a little bit. But I don't, I just, I just don't think it's enough. I like the Ravens here, 24-21, kind of a low-scoring game. Like I said, I think they'll be able to frustrate the Ravens' offense a little bit. But I think Lamar just has a little bit too much. I think he'll be able to make plays with his legs, uh, be able to get the ball to his playmakers and that type of deal there. So, um, Ravens continue the trend here, 28-4-21 at home. Next game, we have the Atlanta Falcons at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Falcons fared by one. Uh, like I said, Falcons come off a loss at home to the Vikings, 31-28. Um, obviously, you know, Desmond Ritter continues to be on the bench. Uh, Taylor Heineke is starting for them as of right now. Um, like I said, he has experience a little bit. I think, honestly, he's a better quarterback than um, Desmond Ritter right now, obviously. And, you know, I think they uh, continue to ride him and continue to put themselves in position to win. Uh, Arizona Cardinals coming off a loss at Cleveland 27 nothing. Like I said, they just weren't able to do anything offensively. Couldn't stop the Browns defensively and that type of deal there. Um, overall, you know, there's news that Kyler Murray is going to be starting in this game. I think this is an opportunity for him to um, shake off the rust and that type of deal. Obviously, having him back is better for the football team. He obviously makes the team a lot better. Um, but at the end of the day, I still like the Falcons to win 22-17. I just think, like I said, Taylor Heineke and this Falcons offense will be able to uh, have a pretty good day on the offense. And then I think the defense, um, they should be able to get after. Obviously, Kyle Murray makes some plays, but I think they should be able to uh, contain him a little bit in this game. So, uh, Falcons 22-17 in Arizona. Really another good game here. We have the Detroit Lions at the Los Angeles Chargers. Lions fair by one and a half. Lions, like I said, they were on a bye week um, last week. They came off a week eight win at home against the Raiders 26-14. Uh, Chargers coming off of a road win on um, Monday Night Football at the Jets. 27-6 dominant performance. Obviously, look at this game. Uh, Justin Herbert was sacked five times, and the Jets still was only, only able to score six points. That's just because their offense, of, I'm, the Jets I'm talking about, their offense was just very bad. 
like it has been all season. Zach Wilson and those guys just couldn't get anything going. Yeah, you really have to give the Chargers defense credit. You know, this is probably the best I've seen them play on the de on defense all season. You know, holding that Jets offense to only six points and really just making things um, difficult for Zach Wilson to move the ball down the field and that type of deal there. Um, but between these two teams here, um, this is just this should be a high scoring game. So if you were to ask me, who do I trust to go down the field uh, and give me the win between Jared Goff? And Justin Herbert, I'm going with Justin Herbert. I just think he's, um, in terms of just not turning the ball over and putting the ball in harm's way, I think he will be able to make more plays. Obviously, Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler will be able to have big games as well against this Lions defense. This Lions defense obviously hasn't been – it's been all right, but they've also been getting up a lot of points on that side of the ball, um, that type of deal there. But – between this, in this game, I like the LA Chargers to win 27-26. Like I say, I just trust um, Justin Herbert more than I do with Jared Goff, especially on the road. Well, they, I mean, the Chargers are at home, but I'm saying I trust Herbert more than I do with Jared Goff. Even though I don't trust the um, Chargers coaching staff, you know, uh, Staley, obviously, I still think he's going to be fired, especially at the end of the season if they don't get his team to playoffs. But I still like them to win at home 27-26. Um, in a big time matchup here. Oh boy, we have not so good a game. We have the New York Giants traveling to the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys straight by 16 and a half. I'm just gonna keep this short here. Obviously, the Giants they come off a loss, 30 to six at the Raiders. Uh, Daniel Jones tore his ACL. Tyrod Taylor's on IR, um, so they're starting Tommy DeVito at quarterback. Never heard of his name before, obviously. Um, so not much to say there. I mean, Giants just – things are trending in the wrong direction. I think they need to just tank and get one of those top picks in the draft there. Cowboys coming off a loss at the Eagles 20-23. You know, they had an opportunity to win the game, obviously, but they just made some boneheaded mistakes at the end of the game. Obviously, Dak Prescott not, you know, getting his foot in bounce, just lack of awareness there. And obviously, the touchdown that they had earlier that got taken off the board – that type of deal. So they could have won there, but also Dak Prescott taking a sack at the end of the game and stuff like that. When you're down near the uh, almost you're down in the red zone, had a chance to win the game, and you take a big sack instead of throwing the ball away. I mean, you've been in the league too long to not know if if nothing's there, throw the ball away. Don't take a big sack though, because you're just putting your team back, and then you just make it harder for you guys to put points on the board in that situation. Um, not much to say though. Dallas 31. To six, they dominate here against the Giants team, a depleted, a depleted Giants team here. Next game, we have the Washington Commanders traveling to Seattle, take on the Seahawks. Seahawks were by six points. Washington Commanders coming off of a win at New England 20 to 17, uh, which really surprised me, especially since they traded the two best players, Montez Sweat and Chase Young, away. Um, I didn't think they would go in New England and win that game, um, but they did. Obviously, Sam Howell had a really big game, you know, with uh, with his legs and his throwing um, against his New England Pagers defense. He just shredded the Pagers defense pretty much the entire game. Um, even though the Pagers did get some stops, he did have an interception, obviously, right before the half. But other than that, he still had a pretty uh, flawless game um, there. Uh, the Seahawks come off of the don or not don, but they come off of an embarrassing loss in Baltimore, 37-3. Couldn't get anything going offensively and that type of deal. They just had no answers for Lamar Jackson. Uh, Lamar Jackson had a field day. He was able to do what he wanted, using his legs, throwing, and that type of deal there. Um, but overall, though, between two teams, I like the Seahawks to bounce back here 23 to 20, winning by a field goal here. Um, I just think, you know, Seahawks come off an embarrassing loss. I, I like them at home here um, in a close fashion. I think Washington will be able to keep things close. I just think Seahawks have a little bit more. I think Geno Smith, obviously, will make some plays here at the end of the game. And I like the Seahawks to bounce back here, 23-20. Sunday Night Football Edition, we have the New York Jets at the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Jets fair by one and a half. Obviously, the Jets coming off of a home loss on Monday Night Football to the Chargers, 27-6. Like I've been saying, man, this, this Jets offense just continues to struggle. Um, the defense is doing their thing. This, I still think this is one of the best defenses in the league. Uh, the defense isn't the reason why they lost. You know, they, they lost this game because of their offense. They just 
can't get anything going offensively. They can't move the ball down the field. Zach Wilson continues to overthink on the football field, continues to just make poor decisions, uh, you know, not making the right reads and that type of deal there. You know, everyone's saying, well, the Jets have a good defense, this, you know, and stuff like that. You know, they're fighting, they're trying to fight for a playoff spot. Well, you're not going to make the playoffs if your offense can't get anything going. You can't always just rely, yes, defense wins championships. We all know that. But at the end of the day, this Jets defense was on the field the entire game. And eventually, your defense is going to get tired if your offense can't get their act together and, and try to produce, put some points on the board and that type of deal. This Jets offense needs to be better if they want to make a playoff push. In my opinion, right now, they're not a playoff team until they get the offense figured out. Jet, the, the defense is phenomenal, okay, like I said before. But their offense, they, they need to be better at the end of the day if you want to make, especially in this AFC where, you know, you have the Chiefs who have offense, the Dolphins, the Ravens, those type, those type of teams. If you want to compete with those teams, you got to match them offensively, and they just don't have it right now. So that's that's all I have to say about that. Um, the Raiders coming off of a big win. Uh, at home against the Giants, 30-6. Obviously, the Raiders firing Josh McDaniels, which I think was the right move because obviously he lost the locker room, that type of deal. Uh, Antonio Pierce, obviously, uh, new face, brings a new type of energy for this team. Obviously, the team has uh, responded really well with him there now. Obviously, the Devontae Adams looks a lot happy. They're just the whole Raiders locker room looks a lot more energized, and they're, they're responding to him. I think he's the right fit. Uh, especially for that organization. Uh, I think though know, things will continue to trend in the right direction. I think he will obviously be the head coach the rest of the season and going into next year and that type of deal. Uh, but overall in this game, you know, I like the Raiders to win 19 to 16. Um, I just think that, like I said, Jets offensive woes continue. Uh, you know, the Zach Wilson continues to struggle uh, to move the ball down the field. I think the Raiders just have a little bit more. You know, they have Devontae Adams and those guys on the offense. I just think they make a little bit more plays here. Um, it'll be a low-scoring game, but I'd like the Raiders to come out on top here, 1916 on Sunday Night Football. Final game of the week, we have the Denver Broncos at the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football. Buffalo favored by 7.5. Uh, Broncos were on a bye week this week or last week. Um, they did come off a week eight win at home against the Kansas State Chiefs, 24 to nine. Uh, Buffalo come off a loss at Cincinnati, 24 18. Uh, you know, Josh Allen continues to put the ball in harm's way, continues to turn the ball over. Uh, like I said in my other video, I just think the Bills' offense is very vanilla right now, um, and I, I think teams are definitely figuring them out offensively. You know, they're just not a team that scares anyone anymore. Uh, you know, Josh Allen, like I said, he's a phenomenal player, but he continues to put the ball, um, you know, continues to make stupid decisions with the football, obviously, um, and that type of deal. I think Kim Dorsey, obviously, just very predictable offensive coordinator. Obviously, everyone pretty much knows what they're going to run, that type of deal, not make, not mixing things up. And just, like I said, this is very, very vanilla offensively in this game, or just with their offense. Um, but overall in this game, I think Denver will be able to keep it close, um, and I think they will be able to cover the spread at the end of the day. But you know, everyone has this. Most people have this game as a blowout. I just don't see it being a blowout. I think it will be a close game. But like I said, I like the Bills here, 23-17 at home. I just think uh, Josh Allen's offense. I just think it will be a little bit too much for Denver. You know, I think even though I do think Denver will be able to keep it close, but Bills just have more talent, obviously, on both sides of the ball. You know, like I said. They're not really scaring teams and that type of deal there. But I like the Bills here to get back on track. 23-17 um, on Monday Night Football. Now I'll do it. Those are my Week 10 NFL predictions. Comment your picks below. Like, share, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the games this weekend. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.